Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for inviting me to talk about our policy on geoinformation and our strategies for achieving national development goals. I attended the forum last year as well, uh, and it gave me a great pleasure to see you again in the Netherlands. Last year, my minister, Melanie Schultz van Hagen, gave the opening speech at the forum, and she welcomed you to our small country, where cities, business parks, and farmers are squeezed in between rivers and highway. She explained that spatial planning in the Netherlands is all about precision. It has to be, given our limited space and relatively large population. We need to plan our land use as cleverly as we can. And that's where geo-information geo comes in. In the Netherlands, we have a great need for detailed information. Every square meter of land must be used and used well. We need to know the exact lay of the land in order to make the right decisions. These are highly complex issues. Geo information helps us to understand them and make quicker, more effective decisions. To make sure the right information is available to make the right decisions, we have been developing our geo information policy over the last few years. For example, we have standardized information on addresses, building, and top of topography in key registers. We have also created a central website that gives public bodies, members of the public, and business access to all new spatial plans in the Netherlands. We are all opening our data. The Dutch government's aim is to, for all public information to be freely accessible by 2015 except, of course, where this would be appropriate, as in the case of privacy-sensitive privacy information. Last year, my minister announced the release of the National Topography Database at this forum. Instead of costing 50,000 euros, this database can be now be used freely and free of charge. Since then, we have released more and more data sets. For example, following the earlier release of the National Motorway data set, we have now made the National Railway and Waterway databases available too. Another example is the renewed and greatly improved online data center launched by the Royal Netherlands Meteorological Institute this year. It is vital for open data to be findable. Releasing data will not be a success if users can't find the data sets or information about their content. For our National Geo Register, this means that publication of metadata is essential. Last year, all Dutch government agencies improved and updated the metadata for the data sets available. This is one reason for the growth in the use of the, these web services. There used to be two or three applications a day for the national topo topography database. But when the database was released, this increased to nearly 40 applications a day. On average, the fewer services is now used over 500 times a month. Other data sets are also used very frequently. For example, the data set on administrative boundaries, the boundaries of our provinces and the municipalities, is viewed over 150,000 times a month on average. And our national elevation model receives almost 80,000 views a month. Open data is an important step towards eliminating costly data transactions and reducing the administrative burden to both government and the public sector. More importantly, it finds innovation and lowers the threshold for investment in innovative products and services. It's a win-win situation. Opening public geoinformation has boosted its use and reuse. If we also make spatial plans and permits digital available, it will make government policy more transparent. We intend to further boost both these, both these developments with the new Environment and Planning Act that we are currently preparing. The purpose of this ambitious new law is to combine, unify, and modernize the many conflicting current regulations concerning our physical environment. It will combine just areas as environment, water, spatial planning, traffic, construction, nature, and monuments and historic buildings into a single unified whole. 
A simple set of uniform decision-making tools has been developed, including an integrated environmental permit. This should facilitate, facilitate and speed up new initiatives and improve decision-making. As you can imagine, this is a massive operation that will take us several years to complete. But for now, for now we are on course. As, as I have already said, every square meter of the Netherlands counts. Making the right decisions on, on matters like the environment, water management, traffic, construction, and so on, is of vital importance. By bringing all these different policy areas together into one framework, the Environment and Planning Act will underline the importance of robust geo-information. This means that part of making the Environment and Planning Act is building a digital environment to support it. In the coming months, we will determine what information and digital support are required. The needs of users will be a central consideration. The system should offer everything people need to build a factory or to renovate a house or to maintain a forest and everything local authorities need to access such in initiatives. To help develop the right digital environment, we are currently thinking in terms of an information avenue. Along this avenue, different data banks will, will be located in different houses. There could be a water house, a soil house, and even if the neighbors don't object, a noise house. Each house can be organized differently behind the front door, but ultimately it will make its data available in the same way and provide the same level of quality and reliability. And, and that anyone looking for information will need to do it is visit the information avenue and collect the data they require. This will save time and money as far as new spatial developments are concerned. And it will give fresh input to opening up and harmonizing the different kinds of geo-information available. It is here that the Environment and Planning Act touches directly upon the European INSPIRE Directive. INSPIRE, as you know, may know, is the EU Directive establishing an infrastructure for spatial information in Europe to support community environmental policies and policies or activities which may have an impact on the environment. INSPIRE requires the EU members, states to harmonize geo data on 34 teams and make it viable, viewable and downloadable across EU boundaries. At first, to be honest, implementing the directive was considered something of a, of a nightmare. We were investing in locating those organizations that had the right data. These organizations in turn had to invest in developing the metadata, view services and download services. And throughout, the feeling wasn't always one of enthusiasm. It wasn't always clear how our own country would benefit from the directive. But because, as we are discovering, the few and download services we have so far created open are all kinds of new opportunities. For example, the combination of spatial information on a map and the elevation model, height, make it possible to analyze building rooftops on a large scale. And this in turn allows us to analyze which roofs are suitable for solar collectors. The view and download services make the data readable, accessible, with the result that more and more beneficial use will be evolved. We also discovered the potential for building the information avenue. The 34 teams match very well with the data required for the Environment and Planning Act. This will also make things easier for the government organizations making data available for, to inspire. You could, could say that the first stones of the information avenue have been laid with inspire. What all this means is that the direction is no longer just another European obligation. It is a development generating positive feedback, both in new market opportunities and in policy. It has become a development where we monetize geospatial value. And with this optimistic and inspiring notion, ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to conclude my speech. And I wish you, again, all an inspirational and fruitful meeting.